In a world of mythical beasts and wondrous tales, one author's fight for creative control captured the hearts of fans around the world. We're talking, of course, about Peter Beagle and his iconic creation, The Last Unicorn. But the story of this beloved tale goes beyond unicorns and adventure. It's a story of the publishing industry's history of mishandling authors, and the all too common issue of authors losing control over their own work. Today we'll explore the epic journey of The Last Unicorn and the lessons it holds for both authors and fans alike. So saddle up, and let's jump into the world of The Last Unicorn. Released in 1968, The Last Unicorn is a story about a unicorn who learns she may be the last of her kind. She embarks on a quest to find her lost kin and along the way meets a cast of characters. The book became a hit, selling millions of copies after the animated film came out. However, behind the scenes, a legal battle was brewing that would ultimately threaten Beagle's control over his own creation. As time passed, Beagle was forced to watch as his creation became a mere commodity. He wasn't able to control how it was marketed or presented to the public, at all. In 2015, a legal battle began when Beagle filed a lawsuit against his former manager, Conan Cochran, and his company, Conlon Press. Beagle claimed that Cochran had breached his fiduciary duty by mismanaging Beagle's career and exploiting his intellectual property, including The Last Unicorn. Beagle alleged that Cochran had failed to pay him royalties for the many adaptations of the book, including the film, merchandise, and comic books. Pretty serious stuff, but this isn't anything new. In fact, over time, the publishing industry has had many occurrences where authors have lost the rights to their work. There are many reasons why this happens, and one is that the publishing industry has a long history of mishandling authors. Publishers often include provisions in contracts that give them control over the rights to an author's work, leaving authors with little recourse to protect their own creations. Publishers are also slow to adapt to the changing technological landscape which has created confusion and uncertainty around how to properly protect an author's intellectual property. But there's another reason, and this one's quite sad. Authors may not understand the terms of their contracts, or they may not understand the value of their work. Publishers or agents may offer deals that are appealing to new or inexperienced authors, but that ultimately give away important rights and control. Authors may also be approached by third parties who offer to buy the rights of their work. And while this can be a tempting offer, authors may not fully consider the long-term implications of selling their rights. Regardless of the reason, losing the rights to your own work can be a frustrating and really disheartening experience for authors. It can prevent them from controlling how their work is marketed and presented to the public, and limits their ability to earn income from their creations. The issue of authors losing the rights to their work is a complicated and ongoing issue in the publishing industry, and it's not on the authors themselves to solve this problem. It's up to publishers and agents to be more transparent in their contracts and make sure this doesn't happen to spoil the livelihood of the authors who create the work in the first place. And Beagle isn't alone in this. There are plenty of authors throughout history who have had similar issues. J.D. Salinger, author of The Catcher in the Rye, fought numerous legal battles to protect his intellectual property, including suing publishers who tried to release unauthorized sequels or adaptations of his work. And Harper Lee, author of To Kill a Mockingbird, won a legal battle after claiming she was duped into signing over her only novel's copyright to her literary agent after suffering from a stroke. Yeah, those are some pretty big names, and we've not even scratched the surface. So let's return to Peter Beagle, because his legal battle did have an outcome. The case was complex, and it took several years to resolve. But in 2019, a jury found Cochrane and Conlon Press liable for fraud, elder abuse, and breach of fiduciary duty. The jury awarded Beagle over $332,000 in damages. This case was significant not just because of the money involved, but also because it highlighted the importance of creator rights. Peter Beagle created The Last Unicorn, and he felt like he should have control over how it was used and marketed and adapted. 
He also felt that he should be financially compensated for the amount of money the last unicorn as a whole made his agent. Cochrane, on the other hand, argued that he had helped Beagle build his career and had invested time and money into promoting the book and its adaptations. The Last Unicorn has been adapted into many different forms, including a graphic novel and a comic book series. With each adaptation, the question arises on who owns the rights to that adaptation, and should the author be compensated for it? Now here comes the good bit, because since regaining control of his creation, Peter Beagle has made the most of it. He set out to revise the original manuscript, updating the language and making small changes that would make the story even more compelling. Today, The Last Unicorn is enjoying a resurgence of popularity, with new editions of the book and audiobooks already out there. And better yet, he's written a long-awaited sequel to his beloved creation, called The Way Home, which I just so happen to have pre-ordered. The Last Unicorn is a timeless story that continues to inspire and enchant readers of all ages, and I'm grateful to Peter Beagle for fighting this battle and bringing it back to life. Peter Beagle's fight for creative control over The Last Unicorn is a story of perseverance and determination, and is an important message for creatives and authors around the world to protect the rights to their own work. From losing control of his beloved creation and regaining it many years later, Peter Beagle is an excellent example of the resilience of authors.